This video tutorial is going to explain how to assign RS designations to chirality centers found in organic molecules. The first step is to identify the chirality center and the four groups attached to it. For example, here we have a carbon with four different groups that are numbered. The next step is to rank the four groups using the Kahn Ingold prelog priority rules. This video assumes that you already know how to do this and that you understand the priority rules involve finding the first point of difference. The third step involves redrawing the molecule so that the fourth priority group is pointed away from you if it is not already. As drawn here, the fourth priority group is drawn with a dashed bond to it in both cases so that it is pointing away from the viewer. You can see that two of the bonds are in the plane of the paper. One of the bond is, is toward you and the fourth bond is away in both of these examples. So that's what you want your drawing to look like. If it's not already like that, you'll have to redraw it, flip it over so that it is. If the groups 1, 2, and 3 are situated so that when we go in numerical order we're moving in the clockwise direction, that molecule is R. If the groups 1, 2, and 3 are situated so that you're moving in the counterclockwise direction, this chirality center is S. So let's look at a few examples. Here we have a molecule and our chirality center is here in the middle. Our four different groups are bromine, hydroxyl, chlorine, and hydrogen. And we can assign numbers to each of these. The, br the bromine is priority one because it is the heaviest. Chlorine is the next heaviest. It has priority two. Oxygen is third and hydrogen is fourth. So if the, if the atoms attached directly are four different atoms, assigning the priorities are easy. In this case, our fourth priority substituent is in the back, and you can see that as we go around one, two, three, we are moving in the clockwise direction. So this molecule is R. Next to it, I have the mirror image, which is the enantiomer. This one should be S, but let's check and make sure. Bromine is 1, chlorine is 2, oxygen is 3, and hydrogen is 4. You can see that the fourth priority substituent is still in the back, and we're moving 1, 2, 3 in the counterclockwise direction, so that the enantiomer is indeed S. If you have an example where your chirality center, which in this example is right here, only shows four bonds, or only shows three bonds, you need to show the fourth bond. If two are already in the plane and one is facing you, the fourth one should be back and it will be a hydrogen. So for this example, the hydrogen is in the back originally it was not shown. So we need to number again. Fluorine is heavier than either carbon or hydrogen, so this is our first priority substituent. If we compare carbons to hydrogens, hydrogen is the lightest, so hydrogen is our fourth priority substituent. Between a propyl group and a methyl group, you have a tie amongst the first two carbons, but then if you move out, this carbon beats any of the hydrogens attached to this carbon. So propyl group has higher priority above the methyl group. So the propyl group is 2, the methyl group is 3. We've assigned all our priorities, our fourth priority substituents in the back again. You can see that we are going in the clockwise direction when we move from 1 to 2 to 3. So this one is R also. Here I have the mirror image, so let's check that one to make sure it's S. Again, you have to draw in the hydrogen if one is missing, and 
make sure that you have one forward, one backward, and two in the plane of the paper. Our priorities are the same since our substituents are the same. And now we are moving in the counterclockwise direction when we go from 1 to 2 to 3. So this enantiomer is S. Let's look at an example where you have the fourth priority substituent, which is a hydrogen that's not shown, so I'm going to draw it in. It's in the front. So again we have two in the plane, one facing you, one going back, but this time our fourth priority substituent, because we know hydrogen is going to be lower priority than any carbon, is in the front. We need to redraw our molecule so that it's flipped over. And so I'm going to copy and paste, and then I am going to flip horizontal so that everything that was on the left is now on the right and everything that was on the right is now on the left. The other thing you must do when you're going to flip a molecule over is that anything that was in the front is now in the back. So I need to change my wedge to a dash and my dash to a wedge. So that's how you flip a molecule over. What was on the left is on the right, what was in the front is in the back. So I've flipped it over and now my fourth priority substituent which is my little hydrogen here, is in the back. So we still have to prioritize. This may involve some mapping here. So I'm going to map each of these. This carbon here has three hydrogens attached. This carbon on the right side has a carbon and two hydrogens attached to it. And the carbon on the left, this one here, is attached to one carbon twice, so I count him twice because he has two bonds to carbon and one bond to hydrogen. Now you can see clearly that this is my, sec is my first priority substituent because two carbons beats two hydrogens. This, this carbon here, I didn't show the original carbon. So this carbon here is this one, and then this carbon, the second carbon, is the one attached to it here. That's how I've mapped them, if you're not familiar with that. And here, this first carbon listed in my map is the double bond carbon. Then this is the carbon that it has two bonds to, so that carbon is listed twice, and then the hydrogen not shown. So two carbons beats one carbon, but one carbon beats three hydrogens. So our methyl is number three, and our CH2 is number two. So that's how you assign priorities. When you have three carbons, you have to figure out what's attached to them. Now we have our priorities assigned. The fourth priority is in the back, and we're going one, two, three in the counterclockwise direction. So this one is S. We need to make sure I've drawn the mirror image, so we need to check that one and make sure that that one is indeed also is R, so make sure it's the enantiomer. Again, I'm going to take to take it and flip it over. So I've copied it. I'm going to flip horizontal so everything on the left is on the right. And now I'm going to take my methyl and make it pointing at me. So again, I need to draw in the missing hydrogen and assign the priorities. They're all going to be the same. So hydrogen is going to be the lowest. My double bonded carbon takes first priority, then the CH2, then the methyl is third. And the way this one is drawn, we are going one, two, three in the counterclockwise direction. 
So it appears that this one is also S. Let's check and see what we did wrong. And this is why I do both, so that we can see what went wrong. Looking at my original drawing here, we have flipped it correctly. The double bond is on the right, now it's on the left. The methyl was in the back, now it's in the front. We've definitely assigned these correctly, and this is definitely the counterclockwise direction. Let's see what happened to this one. When I flipped it, the double bond went to the right. The methyl is now forward. We are going, ah, this is not the counterclockwise direction. This is the clockwise direction, which is R. You guys probably noticed that before I did, but that's why that's a check. So everything checks out. We have one of each, and those are my examples of RS. You might want to watch part two of this video where I show you an alternative method to figuring out R or S that is helpful when the priority, fourth priority substituent is parallel to the plane of the paper.